Buddy, it's Thursday, 10 a.m. Thursday, 10 a.m. It's get your pain on. My name is Dallas and I'm pain and scar. The Admiral of the Broken Coast. Yeah? Wow. <laughs> I don't even know where that came from. I was in a bad <laughs> mood until just now. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Dallas Kemp. And here at Private Press. And this is Get Your Paint On. That happens every Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And joining us today is the voice, the words, the storyteller supreme, Mr. Doug Seacat. Hello, hello. Ah, that voice. And running the controls today is Mr. John Swinkles. Oh, hi, everybody. Hype, 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 hype. I don't have any um, paper towels. I guess I'll use this one. Do it. Use that one. Maybe Brendan didn't blow his nose on this one. Anyways, let's get started. We're going to paint Scar. I painted her last week. I painted her face. Um, this week, I'm going to paint her armor. So I'm going to be using the Blighted Gold recipe from basically the Crix Mark II book. And just, uh, just uh, painting that gold for everybody. Mm-hmm. Get her a little shiny. Man, when you're uh when you're buckling swashes on the high seas, you gotta look you know, crest. You gotta look good. Huh? I don't know if this car actually buckles swashes. She has a lot of buckles. She, she has a lot of clasps. <laughs> Way of privateer she, press. She love her buckles. She swashes. She swooshes the buckles. She has other people that can swash for her if she needs to. Alright, so I'm just gonna take blighted gold. She can she can delegate her swashbuckling as much as she needs. She has like a whole fleet, correct? <laughs> she has, yeah, she has multiple fleets actually. So Okay, so I know we got some new characters coming up, right, Doug? We got like the Axiara and yeah, I'm excited to get Axiara out there. She's she's been a character we've been talking about um, in the, even going back to the original World One game for a long time. Is she that old? Yeah, she's really? she's been she was kind of one of the one of the first prominent um, Satixis other than Scar that we ever talked about. Um, she even has she has her own little. Uh, um, mercantile empire she has a what's called the rape blade emporium where she'll sell you fine Crixian goods on the mainland like if you're wanting some nice uh you know daggers or swords or what have you you can go to the rape blade emporium and pick them up wait is that real yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just go to she the actually has emporium. uh she actually has things that she sells now i imagine um the clientele of her of her store is uh, of dubious origins. <laughs> You're not getting um, the finest people at the Great Blade Emporium. It's a hive of scum and villainy, <laughs> yeah. one would say. Yeah, she's got a big branch there in Five Fingers, perfectly you know, suited because there's a bunch of uh, like former Crixians that live in in, uh, in Five Fingers, you know, so it's kind of like a little home away from home. Okay, so that's something I guess I just... Uh, like I've re I've read the fluff, but maybe I missed. Like, how do the mainlanders respond to a Satixis Badly. who's not trying to kill them? <laughs> well, I, there's not like, a lot can of them. can they integrate? Uh, can there be uh, any integration? Not much, but I mean, I do think like the idea is um, the way we set up Five Fingers is there's a couple of islands that have been sort of like co-opted that are the worst. You know, even even as Five Fingers itself is a horrible place in many ways. I mean, it's a, it's a fun place to go. It's a good place to go for shore leave. But um, but there's a, couple, there's a couple of islands that are particularly dangerous and where um, the Crixians are comfortable, where you know Styxes could probably uh, set up shop around a little bit. Yeah, but for the for the most part, I imagine she's working through intermediaries a lot of the time. Uh, you can't be a Satixis wandering around the mainland um, in general. It's not a good idea. She's a fence. Some Signar and Gun Mage will come up, start shooting at you or whatever. And Doug, James R. Keller asks, what do living cricks eat? Blighted seafood? <laughs> there's there's a lot of seafood, I would imagine. Yeah, definitely. And I think you can develop a tolerance for Blight. uh, blighted squid or blighted bread. You know, get Prisoners? Some, there's, there's some blighted bakeries that are quite delightful. <laughs> Yes, I'll have a... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can sure. Get blighted yeah. bakery. Blighted croissant. The, the blighted soy latte. <laughs> sure. Extra hot, extra foamy. Yeah, yeah. 
and 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 you know, skinny. Chris, Chris, is, be skinny. Chris is a little bit tropical, so you know maybe there's some blighted sugar cane, blighted coconut. Sure, <laughs> get get some blighted uh, tropical drinks. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, I think once you get used to the blight, it's not so bad. I, I would be a fun IKRPG session to go to Five Fingers and meet uh, Satixis Fence. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to sell you like weird weird daggers and things. Well, yeah, because I mean, your, your natural instinct would be like, she's gonna kill us. <laughs> yeah, well, she's, she's gonna like, breed with us. She just wants she just wants her money. And but if she's like, well, I just I'm here to guys, I'm here to barter. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, well, what do you got? She's like, blood ritual dagger. <laughs> yeah. Do you got anything else? <laughs> Lighted ramen, extra they, spicy, says Legionnaires. They even have some like special. There's some there's some special Crixian booze that's really dangerous because it's basically like addictive and, and ruins your health. That they they sell. Um, so it's so it's fast track alcohol. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the you know, Crixian. Crixian heroin equivalent. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Wow. <laughs> we actually had it set up in, in Five Fingers. There's there's a couple of important people in Five Fingers that have to drink some of this booze regularly or they will die. Really? And so then that, okay. that means they're indebted to uh, the know, Crix. got to make sure they keep that supply going. So. Well, I mean, yeah, that's a good way to, like, <laughs> ignore some tariffs or yeah, something. Exactly. It's just, like, get the guy in charge addicted yeah. to your, your wares. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we kind of set it up where um, before kind of the, the current war, um, uh, Cricks, one of the ways they got a bunch of people into the Thornwood was through Five Fingers, through, like, smuggling people up the river. Um, so, you know, you could have some kind of um, barely disguised... Crixian ship that kind of comes through, gets passed through, goes up the uh, Dragonstone River, winds up dropping off like Asphyxius and all his friends in the Thornwood. So, um, yeah, so I think Scar and Axiara would, you know, kind of play a big part of that. That's awesome. Really, I really like Scar. I think she's, yeah. she's a fun character. She's real fun, yeah. I'm less, less, I, I don't always enjoy writing the pirate dialogue but you know <laughs> you gotta you gotta have it you don't you're not you're not it's a lot of yar, yar. Yar. <laughs> we try not to go too heavy although some characters do like mr walls is sort of our uh, full-on 100 percent pirate dialogue guy oh yeah oh gosh yeah he's <laughs> and but scar's got scar's got a bit of it too she's been she's been out there talking pirate for quite a while talking pirate that sounds like a podcast <laughs> talking pirate <laughs> Speaking of which, we'll have to do something special in September for Talk Like a Pirate. Yeah, yeah. I think we could get, I think Getz could probably do a good pirate review. Oh, we yeah, get yeah. Going. <laughs> so. My favorite, my favorite pirate joke is, uh, what's a pirate's favorite letter? R. I, you would think that, but tis actually the C. Ah, nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> so good, I love that joke. R's name has the R. In it. Scar! <laughs> so I'll build right in. But yeah, we've kind of set it up to where, um, especially since um, Denegra got herself killed by her sister, um, Scar's basically. Good job, Dirty D. She's like the most powerful, influential living entity in Cricks, you know, as far as it goes. Yeah, as far as living goes, she, she does have some sway and power, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like, the way, the way they've kind of worked it out in the hierarchy is, um, you know, technically she reports to Lich Lord Terminus, who's sort of in charge of all the nautical doings, but he's increasingly just delegates it. He's like, you know, I'm not so interested in being on those ships anymore. I'd rather be on the land killing things. Um, you know, so he kind of lets, lets Scar kind of handle all of the, the fleet actions. That's how you lose control of your pirate <laughs> yeah, ship. Yeah, this is like, I he the <laughs> land lover he be. Exactly. He's walking around on land all the time. Or flapping around on his wings, I guess. Sure. I say. Yeah. So, but yeah. So she's the way we've kind of set up. She's um, she's in charge of the Black Fleet ostensibly, but the Black Fleet is also includes all the flagships of the fleet. So they're like the ones that are actually in charge. And um, you also have like the 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 Ghost Fleet, which Wingrave pretty much does his thing. You can't really you know, just kind of let him do his ghost thing. And then you have this huge. Uh, motley raiding fleet where all of the rest of the sort of living Crixian 
uh, pirates are uh, situated, and Axiara is actually in charge of that. She's in charge of sort of the uh, the ragtag raiding fleet with all the the living pirates, and and um, and we kind of set it up to where like the Satixis kind of have the uh, the the choice of positions. Like all of your best ships will have your Satixis officers, and and sure. uh, so they're kind of the key positions all over the place. And then Dallas, while you're while you're getting that blighted gold in there, uh, for mm-hmm. folks that might have missed last week, what were the colors you used for the skin? Holy cow! Because it was basically four primary colors. Yeah, I mean the primary colors there are um, underbelly blue, uh, beaten purple, carnal pink. Oh, was there a little umber in there? No, there's no umber. Man, oh. Trollblood base. Ah, that's it. Because you, you put that little blue in there. Little yeah, you definitely, if, if you're really interested in painting Satixis skin, um, you can go back and watch last week's episode where I paint Miss mm-hmm. Raven Mane here. But also, we have a Satixis skin painting video coming for yes, P3's Presents. Nice. Next week? I think it's next week. Yeah. Spoilers! <laughs> There's a couple of people that have already mentioned they're looking forward to that video. Good. Like, it was a fun little video. A little uh, Satixis Blood Priestess going on. And I go over her recipe in much greater detail than last week, where I'm kind of painting here live and off the cuff. Last week it was more of a, you know, this is actually what I'm doing, guys. There's no one here telling me sweet stories. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. You're not going to distract me. Like, the, the story helps me paint better, actually. Like, well, because I get, it gets my head in the character. Like, we talked yeah. last time you we were on. It's just like, it gets my head in the character and kind of lets me think more about them and, like, where yeah. I want to take the colors. It's supposed to, cause, I mean, this isn't the studio one. The studio one's painted by Mr. Brendan Roy right. and turned out super fantastic. Um, this one, I'm just painting for myself um, to go with my crack hands, sure. which I showed off a couple weeks ago. Um, so. I can be a little more loose. I mean, I'm keeping the, the, the colors the same. I'm just kind of mixing up like how I'm approaching them. Right. Um, so the story actually helps me, is what I'm saying. I, 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 like, I like character. You were, you were talking about how Scar is like one of the highest ranked. Oh, yeah. Being yeah, she, as, far as, a, as far as being alive goes, she's, she's tops right now. Where do you like the blood priestesses fall in that hierarchy? Middle no management. Middle no <laughs> management. <laughs> they do all right. <laughs> Looks like we got somebody else to sacrifice, ladies. <laughs> yeah. ah. um, it never ends. In in uh, No Quarter Prime number four, I think it's number four, where we're having all of the um, the Crixian fleet uh, article. We kind of get into it a lot, and um, uh, Gets and I had some fun sort of describing just how gross some areas of those ships are just because of all of the sort of blood sacrifice going on. Oh, you know, yeah. One of, those, one of those things that you just kind of, uh, there's certain certain rooms you just don't want to go into if you're still alive. See, now that's something I think is, like, missing in, like, stories. It's <laughs> yeah. like the actual, like, practice. Yeah, exactly. And, like, the day-to-day, the day-to-day of some of these things that, like, we're like, oh, they sacrifice 20 bodies a day. You're like, all right, let's do the math on that. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's talk about the in and out of that, <laughs> right? It's a lot of a lot of stuff left after that. That the necrotex, the necrotex get a piece of it. But yeah, who scrubs this? Who scrubs that deck? <laughs> yeah, they'll do. Not not the uh, the high end Satixis officers, I don't think. But you could also have like uh, I have to imagine, you know, you could you could have modified mechanothrall that's sort of your mob thrall. Oh, gross! They probably don't do a good job. I, now I'm just imagining like a bloat thrall that like <laughs> you don't want your bloat thrall that just sucks up the oh, I see, yeah, yeah, just reverse blah, 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 and just suction. fills himself up with idea. body I parts. Like Ugh. I like the, the yeah the little vacuum cleaner thrall. That's so gross though. <laughs> it's grossing me out. It like wanders off you know somewhere else in the hold where the necrotech's waiting you know for all the parts that he's gonna bring. He's like a Roomba. Yeah, a little Roomba. <laughs> just a thrall that, ship. like, they that do all these sacrifices. The thralls come yeah. out. They take the parts they want. The the blood priestesses take the heart, you know, or whatever. Sure. So it's, and then there's this like this leftover bits and bobs, and then the Roomba <laughs> thrall comes out and just. <laughs> and then they weaponize it, of course. Sure. 
Okay. If it goes into the, you know, the bile sludge. It just explodes. Gross. Yeah, that's pretty gross. I don't think I don't think the um, the vacuum crawl is allowed in Scar's you know, captain's cabin. In her personal quarters, she's just like. She handles that herself. She's like, I, they're like, mistress, we can have him clean your room. She's like, nah, I'll do it no, myself. No, like, that's okay. I'll make the time to clean my own room. Exactly. I don't think even she wants to let anybody else in there. Um. The one co so we're talking about the living pirates like we're introducing into War Machine the yeah, uh, which is really exciting that's kind of cool yeah I think it's super awesome the shard pirates are coming and those guys I mean the models look super awesome but it is cool seeing more living things yeah, in Crix this is something you know like it, it's been fun to see us finally getting into all that you know where we've got like the blood forgers and we've got the black forgers. and then we've got the shard pirates mm -hmm. like Yeah, and the, uh, the models are super cool looking and just really great looking pirates in general. Yeah. Um, but they, uh, man, they've lost my cold steel now. I thought I had to drop. You keep losing all your metals. I know, dude. You know what? <laughs> pig iron it is. Wait. <laughs> yeah, pig iron, you know, just means you didn't get the, get the yeah, shine you, you get to do more piloting. Yeah. We're going to darken her up. We're going to use pig iron. So, uh, Doug, Nathan Howard asks, uh, given the number of people that die in the Iron Kingdoms, <laughs> what is the birth rate like? Oh, my gosh. The birth rate has to be pretty good. Although, I have, you know, one thing is to bear in mind is, like, the deaths are a little bit focused upon and maybe exaggerated. Like the, the camera just, just kind of Yeah, we, out we there. tend to focus on where people are getting murdered. And um, in a lot of cases, the, the actual battles are a lot smaller scale than... And sometimes people are imagining, you know, people are imagining sort of that World War One, World War Two vibe. But most of our fights are not necessarily on that scale. Um, so there's definitely plenty of time and opportunity for people to still have kids, raise them, sure. have them learn, uh, grow up, abandon their kids, life, and then get murdered by a dire troll or what have you. Yeah. And then Mr. Nate Brooks, the uh, sculptor for the ship for Scar Three, was in chat and he was asking if Satixes have hooves under their shoes. <laughs> Do. That's, oh, I don't remember that, don't they? I don't think so. Have we shown, so. I thought, no. we, didn't we show art with them? I no. I don't think so. I don't think they do. But, you know, Matt Wilson always surprised me sometimes, you know, where, like, we're, we there'll be something that we haven't illustrated, and then I'll be like, what? <laughs> they have hooves? No, but I, I don't think so. But they do appear to have very, um, uh, they do like the heels in such a way that it could be their feet are different. You know, it's hard to tell with blighted. Well, because a hoof would, would like give you that. Same yeah, yeah, exactly. Thing. So maybe the, the heel is actually there to support sure. the fact that there are hooves. I, I, I'll just say I can't rule it out. I've not seen an illustrated Satixis foot. We're going to have to get on this. <laughs> These <laughs> questions need to be answered. Yeah, I, I, but that's why Doug's here. Uh, sometimes, I, sometimes I don't know. You know, we have to, we have to, uh, leave things for the artist you know when an artist owns the company then he can occasionally just draw something and you're like oh okay i guess that's a that's a thing now like a weird um back end of a ship that floats around on on ghosts ghost and, ships man and i'm all in like when they when they were first talking about that it was pretty amusing because i really didn't know they were serious for a little while that that was going to actually be a thing um we made it dude yeah yeah and it looks awesome but at one point, they were even talking about having both the front and the back halves. You know, like you were going to have sort of two halves of a boat wandering around the table. But I, I, I'm kind of glad they didn't, uh, they didn't go for that. Now, what's the name of her boat? I can't remember. The well, her, her main boat, the, the one that is still intact <laughs> and floating around on the sea, is the Widower. But um, the this this one that she can kind of ride like a hovercraft. That's her dinghy. Land, is uh, has a, a a little bit of a hard to pronounce name, but it's the it's the um, it's Timo Perry, sort of a, a Greek spelled name. We um, we kind of staged it to where this was this was an ancient ship from um, the early days of Crix. Uh, it was it was owned by uh, King Mor Morcraig, who had defied Torek, and uh, so this this ship is something she kind of brought up from the depths of the sea in some kind of a ritual. Uh, 
and uh, now she gets to ride around on it. Okay, see, I haven't heard this story yet. Like, yeah, I, it's, I, it's something that we haven't had a chance to, to get out. It'll be in that same no quarter prime, right? Number four. I'm so it's is it? It's like a she used magic to like summon this actual yeah. ship, and it's and that's for her to engage in land attacks, right? Yeah. Well, and, and one of the one of the nice aspects of that is it sends it back into the ship. It includes um, a full captain's cabin, so it's kind of like having a mobile home that you can drive around. Like she can have, you know, she's got her full room in there, so she can kind of have a home away from home from her ship. And she's still got cannons. Yeah, still got, still got, still got cannons. She has some crew on there. Um, so yeah, it, it would be actually, I wish we had an illustration of like this ship, um, you know, disembarking from another bigger ship, <laughs> you know, to go, go kill Oh yeah, ship. yeah, that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> Little landing craft back end ship. But yeah, one of the, one of the notions is that, you know, that sort of, uh, crest of soul stuff under um, under the, the, the back end of the ship are, are, are these sort of tortured souls of all these people that, that have been killed and that are attached you know, to, the, to the vessel and that just sort of rides along the top of them. Right. It's like, right, this, the trap, the, the, it's almost like the, the souls are trapped to the boat. Then, yeah, right? exactly. Okay. Yeah. And then she's able to control it through her magic. That is not a good type of the afterlife. Like, nobody's looking to become part of the underside of, of a boat. Of a weird boat. <laughs> so. It's like, what happens when you die, Mom? <laughs> well, you become part of a boat. Yeah, sometimes. Wait, what? <laughs> if you're not a good kid, if you don't, you don't eat your vegetables, you might wind up a little starship. What a terrible way to spend <laughs> eternity. Yeah. There, there's a number of bad, bad afterlives in the IK and, and Crix contributes to quite a few of them. Oh, that's what I love about the IK. It's just like, <laughs> it's just like, very few good outcomes to death. <laughs> yeah, you got There's there. It, it, it kind of makes you appreciate why people are willing to put up with an angry god like Menoth, you know, um, when at least he's got like a walled city in the afterlife, and you don't wind up below Scar's ship in the endless city run over. Just <laughs> tirelessly <laughs> yeah. tread upon <laughs> for all of eternity by rotted wood. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm thinking about. Uh, so I've seen some cool conversions. Speaking of uh, the boat, um, one of our uh, one of our staff is working on a kraken uh -huh. sepulcher. Oh, okay. And Scar's boat is like on top of it. Oh, wow, and that's cool. It, and so I've talked about that like for myself a little bit. Like I love the idea of a big hermit crag. <laughs> yeah. Scar boat. I think uh, it's a fun idea. Well, it's a fun idea to imagine like the. Um, the 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 kraken having that hermit crab personality you know like it wants to collect things and, and put it on its back like a weird weird little little personality quirk what am I, okay i want to shade with i need to make some shade here for the armor so i'm going to mix brown ink and crick's bane base so what i'm so i think that's a fun idea of the hermit crab I think I, I like the idea of like this things like swimming around under the sea with her. Sure. Until she's ready to disembark. <laughs> yeah. Stuff before Kraken like brings the boat up to her. Oh yeah, yeah. Right, and then they just march up on land. Sure. Like, Here we go. Ready to go, a little duo. Yeah, I, I, I like that quite a bit. You said that somebody's already making that right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lauren, one of our uh, production staff. That's great. I imagine that would be an expensive uh, model. That's an, yeah, that's, that's quite the conversion, right? <laughs> yeah, like, that's a that's a that's a luxury uh, conversion project. I got. I love seeing when people do cool stuff like that, or like the really large um, dioramas and things like that. So there's a there's a part of me. It's like I kind of still want to do that myself because I just think the idea is like really wacky fun. Sure. But then the other idea I've been thinking about is. Um, just doing water effect bases. Oh, okay. Like I'm doing for my Krakens. And since it's see-through water, right? It's like actually like a uh, clear resin stuff. Yeah. Painting the lower half of the boat ghostly. Oh, cool. Turning into wood. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. And then filling the water up so you can see the glow under the water. 
like she's like she's magically yeah, like, like she's like magically she's changing manifesting the boat. Yeah. yeah that's that's really cool and that is one of the things about scar that you know that we were talking mostly about kind of her influence over cricks and her authority which is huge but she's also you know a, one of their in cricks to get ahead you really do need to be a good occultist <laughs> and she's right. she's got the dark magic uh, in a big way too um and she kind of practices that um Crixian blood magic and um and we've kind of shown her she's one of these one of the characters that we have that's able to kind of look into the future and and uh, or at least gauge kind of the tides of fate and kind of her spells play with that a little bit sometimes of um, the idea of kind of manipulating the threads of fate i love playing her so much uh in the game um I'm a big fan. That's of right. Because you, you, is do you consider Crix to be your your main faction? Kador. Kador's your main. Kador's faction. totally my main but, faction. But but you do play Crix. Quite yeah, a bit. yeah. I, I I play a lot of uh, Scar One right. and Double Krakens. That's cool. And and the only Crix I have are just the pirates. <laughs> sure. It's just, the pirates. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why I'm all about it. Else? All right. I was having super happy fun times with audio. So uh, Dallas, hit me with those paint colors you've got going on right again. Uh, right now I'm shading my Blighted Gold with a mix of Crick's Bane Vase and Brown Ink. I'm just kind of washing but not uh, letting it uh, get on the upper surfaces and just creating like a nice shade to my gold. That's it. Super easy, super fun. Um, the other thing I was thinking about doing with my scar was not having the satixis, mm, okay, weirdly sure. enough, um, but putting revenant all oh, over. Oh yeah, because I, I if like, you're doing I the like whole the ghost, the whole ghost theme, yeah, I can yeah. See that. that would be cool. And I and I think you know, Rengrave would be willing to to loan her a couple revenants if she needed them for a little while. I'm sure there's plenty of <laughs> yeah. undead pirates oh yeah the... absolutely i mean usually the revenants keep to their own ships but you know it's 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 a ghost ship it qualifies i think maybe it's a special mission scar yeah absolutely she's like all right i need some ghost pirates yeah and she... they're like all right well <laughs> send in the aquas uh you know the form <laughs> yeah they send in like three or four uh of their uh chosen revenants yeah she she picks and chooses <laughs> right she's yeah. like well i want him because he's awesome and ren goes like god i really don't like loaning him out he's yeah so exactly or one of one of uh one of ren graves main officers or something that scar always pulling rank <laughs> always taking my people well especially because now she's admiral <laughs> well she's been admiral for a while honestly like you know but now it's all you know officially <laughs> it, in her it's, title it's, yeah, yeah it's one of those titles that you know scar just accumulates titles you know she's queen of the broken coast she's admiral of the black fleet blah 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 you know slayer she, of men <laughs> she can't really be promoted anymore you know slayer she's, just, of men. she's just accumulating slayer more of titles <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know until until uh maybe they set up a, a colony somewhere or something so she could be like governor of uh something or other so Joey Epps uh, brings up kind of a good question. I'm gonna I'm gonna tweak it a little bit. Is there an Iron Kingdom's version of like Davy Jones, and what does she owe him? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I Rengrave is basically the Iron Kingdom's, you know, equivalent. Um, and uh, you know, he's he's another one of my favorite characters one for you know for raising the the ship basically. <laughs> oh, right? I see. Yeah, no, we 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 definitely um, th there's there's some fun uh, aspects of that ship that we kind of talk about in that. Um, article in No Quarter Prime number four, which is that there's one of the things about Morcraig, uh, King Morcraig, his uh, the ruins of his old castle. He was one of the first pirate kings, you know, before um, mm -hmm. Torek mm -hmm. came by and turned most of them into lich lords. Right. Um, but Morcraig's it was his treasure hoard where the uh, the witch fire was, and uh, oh. so that's when um, when uh, Kel uh, or when uh, the expedition was set up to to recover the witch fire they they were plundering more craig's uh, castle mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh we've suggested that in scar's little half ship there's a couple of um a couple of sealed crates that she's trying to figure out how to open in there so Ooh. there there could be some cool some cool treasure that that uh that nobody knows what's in there so uh she's trying to figure out how to you know some kind of weird combination occult lock or something that she's got she's got to break through so so there is some 
some hidden treasure even within this weird little back end of a of a ghost ship that she's riding around on now. That's awesome. Like I love the witch fire. I mean, that's where all this begins really, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So anything related to the witch fire I'm all about. That book is almost twenty years old. <laughs> it is, right. It is crazy to think about. So I mean this year we're celebrating the fifteenth anniversary of war machine yeah right as a, as a game but yeah all that iron kingdom's goodness like yeah, actually came, came to out. life prior yeah i can't remember if it was it was i want to say 2001 or but i feel yeah, like maybe it might have been even earlier than that i think it was 2000 okay yeah it's all hazy now <laughs> in, in the brain Ooh, Fen, fencat 79's actually got a good question that uh, that i've always wondered but never thought to ask you sure. even though you're only you know 500 <laughs> feet away yeah. are there any undead satixes um that's a good question i i would have to think that there are that said um i think the satixes are uh, as a people um they probably don't don't dig on that <laughs> And so I think the notion would be that they probably have their own funeral practices and they've kind of, there's, there's an interesting thing going on between the Satixis and the Lich Lords and in Cricks in general is that they're sort of a privileged people in Cricks. They're, they're so useful um, to crew these ships that they're kind of given a lot of leeway. And um, I think that the notion is probably it would be a bad idea for a necrotech to just start grabbing Satixis corpses and turning them into So they're not exactly things. sacred, but they're held in yeah, high Yeah, I esteem. think that the, there's probably some kind of an agreement, like, you know, we get to keep our dead. Um, but that said, like, I, I, I would not be surprised if at some point, you know, if, if Jason Souls ever decided there was going to be some kind of crazy undead Satixis uh, thing, it could, it could certainly happen. Well, and I imagine they'd be terrifying, right? Because there'd and, be probably like more effort put into well, their yeah, their and that's like juju. If, if we were ever to do that, I would want them to be something kind of special, like yeah, uh, like the pistol wraiths or something. You know, something that has a little bit more self will that isn't just kind of like a thrall shambling around. Like you'd want them to be some kind of uh, you know some kind of undead terror. But I, I do think it's it's an interesting area that we haven't kind of uh explored very much but i think like i said i my hunch is there's there's some kind of prohibition um in in satixis culture well and you have the you dead. have the blood priestesses you have the blood witches yes. you have you have all of these satixis ritualistic yeah that 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 the notion is that a lot of their power comes from the spilling of living blood of that right. um, that primal life energy it's the same kind of it's the same kind of magical power that um that the druids uh, and the, like the farm, do you want nautical vampires because that's how you get nautical <laughs> yeah, that's, vampires. How you, that's how you get nautical <laughs> vampires it's true so uh like i said i think there is something possibly there but it's something that we haven't um we haven't created yet yeah because i imagine they'd be monsters yeah they would be they would i think they would be pretty interesting you know um uh, sorry now i've got like visions yeah. of like winged satixis <laughs> and stuff yeah. like floating around in my head sure i, like, like, I like the idea of like a wraith wraith vampire-y Satixis thing. I think that's yeah, that pretty sounds cool. kind of dope. <laughs> it does. <laughs> you could probably talk Jason into it. We'll see. Oh, yeah. A ghostly Satixis. <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe like some sort of weird like spell or ritual like when certain ones like reach a certain like status when they die they get to carry on right like well, it's it, almost it, like a right well and that's the thing yeah like, like i even said though, that's how you get nautical vampires <laughs> you know even though they have a special status you got you got to wonder like are they jealous of the fact that i mean the truth is not very many crixians get to live forever despite the hype and then <laughs> most of them become mm, corpses and their souls wind up in soul cages it's not a good end but you do have a few crixians that become you know, yeah iron liches or what have you uh, so I could see a Satixis wanting to stick around. Yeah, get like an iron witch. <laughs> sure. Outside of Denegra. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think I'm surprised Asphyxius hasn't uh, you know already started messing around with that. But I guess he's been too busy, you know, making one of those blood priestesses will and... mess him up. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. They probably don't want uh, Asphyxius wandering around on Satix. And then uh, Legionnaires uh, is, was asking, so are there are any, are any of the mainland nations doing anything as far as like building up a fleet or anything like that to deal with? They've tried this a couple times. Um, one of the things that we we kind of uh, dealt with a little bit in in some short fiction um, 
after the Witchfire trilogy, so in the real early days, kind of in, in mm-hmm, War mm-hmm. Machine's early days, was the the notion that Signar with King Leto was actually in serious planning with his um, with his War Council, considering the possibility of an invasion fleet for right. Crix or trying to do something about the Protectorate, and then mm-hmm. and then Kador invaded. Yeah, Kador was like <laughs> and kind of changed Excuse the whole me. thing up. <laughs> but yeah, like we've shown, yeah. um, we see you have plans. <laughs> <laughs> we we yeah. are here to say hello and exactly. to take Lail. So that kind of diverted a lot of that. But but the whole notion is um, one one of the problems. Uh, we've shown that that Signar works pretty closely with Ord, for example. Like both Ord, yeah. the Ordic and Signaran fleets are pretty heavily involved in clashes with Crix on a, on a regular basis. Yeah. And the notion of some kind of a shared expedition to deal with Crix has probably been talked about a bunch of times, but the it's one of those it's one of those issues where the the sheer investment in lives it, like it would take such commitment that people have been reluctant to do it, especially in the earlier years like before kind of the recent um, war period, you know, the Crix was ra- the Crix was raiding the um, coastal villages and things but they were they were kind of keeping elusive and they weren't they weren't as open of a threat as they are now sure sure. and so uh but yeah i think i think it's probably been talked about a number of times and it's one of those scenarios where you know you can imagine the the generals being like okay are you willing to give up half of the signaran army you know to to strike a serious blow against craigs and so like i don't know if that's a good idea obviously if people can can find it and i think we have it digitally on the website but obvious good reading is the witchfire trilogy well sure right and, what are your top 3 other other books in the line that you would that you would recommend to someone who wanted to read more about satixis or maybe scar specifically well um some of them are uh shorter pieces i i, I don't mm-hmm. have the list in front of me right now but, but I like could, warcaster could chronicles i think yeah. there's one of those that has well there's um and i had done one one of the um novellas that i did for our um no quarter special anniversary mm-hmm. edition was um a story featuring magnus in his early days when he was still and that was in the 10th uh, anniversary Warcaster. one yeah, yeah it was in the 10th yeah. anniversary of, of no quarter i think right or no 10th anniversary of I can't remember now if it was War Machine or Privateer Press. So it's a ten. People, people, people will have <laughs> but, to look for a no, post no. from you later about. Uh, well, yeah. About well, what the I was going to say is that that particular um, novella is also in one of our No Quarter collections on Skull Island. Yeah. And um, Scar plays a prominent role in that piece, and it's it's basically featuring one of the Signaran efforts during the Shard invasions to make a serious blow against Crix. Like they basically landed on Black Rock and were trying to take out all of the, the Necrofactoriums there. Sure. And Scar's Scar's a prominent uh, prominently featured in that story. Um but yeah it also shows how unpleasant invading <laughs> Crix is. And uh, um, it's, a, it's a bad idea. <laughs> one of our other collections I think has um the story that 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 features the expedition to recover the Witchfire. Right. Uh and um there's a there's a few others. We we have the you know, for just general Crixian stuff, of course, uh, you know, there's the, the Venethrax novella. But we haven't had a chance to feature um, Scar, you know, as the central focus of a longer piece yet. We're going to uh, have to she fix could, that. She could certainly support one. I mean, she's been involved in so many things. Like, you know, she's she's directly tied into the whole uh, Haley Denegra kidnapping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. she was the one who saw the vision of... Um, special children that they should uh or a special child as they thought it was <laughs> that they should kidnap um and uh you know we kind of we kind of uh, get into that a little bit in in this upcoming no quarter with the idea that um you know uh she brought that gift basically to asphyxius of like mm-hmm. hey i know this cool person's being born that we can take advantage of and then Asphyxius didn't even appreciate it just because they uh, only picked up half of them. <laughs> and he kind of, One know, out of two ain't bad. He, uh, <laughs> he yelled at her, and, and since then, they haven't been friends. So it's a little falling out between uh, So what it Asphyxius sounds like is, is a little later today, I'll, I'll pester <laughs> yeah, we, you again. We, we'll try to get some And links. we'll get a list together, and yeah. I'll put it up there's on a, There's uh, a few Facebook. shorter things, but like I said, we don't have, um, we don't have one specific piece that that is all about scar but there's some, there's some good crixian flavor stuff <laughs> yeah there's definitely some some stuff that i think people will enjoy so what what are we adding to her now dallas um i've taken so i shaded the umbra or I shaded the gold mm-hmm. with a mix of um umbral umber and cold black 
and that's just down in the deepest recesses of the gold. And now I'm kind of uh, taking some Crixbane base, and I grabbed a little bit, I was just a little teeny tiny touch of that gold shade, mixed it into my Crixbane base, and now I'm shading the silvers with that. So just getting some shading on my metals so I can move on from that. So your own uh, Crixian army, do you have uh, sort of a, any special color scheme or anything for that? Or are you? Not really. Um, they're, they're kind of blue instead of uh, the Crix Bane color. Uh -huh. um, the big thing is, is they're just converted and they're, water bases and mm -hmm. um they're all rusty right they're not clean studio style paint they're just they're they're like covered in rust and grime and you know sculpted krakens and stuff like that so you do you like work you like working with the that water based material isn't that stuff pretty toxic <laughs> oh man I, I don't know if it's toxic i mean live by the brush die by the brush doug <laughs> you do what you do yeah yeah Die doing what I love. <laughs> uh, the stuff I have, is, I doubt, is toxic. Yeah. yeah. You, do you have to do anything special when you're doing that? Is it just something you kind of mix up and pour on there? Oh, you don't even mix it up. You just pour it on. Oh, really? That's cool. Yeah, I've never on. worked with that stuff. So Nate Brooks has uh, has another question. Why are the skulls on her back upside down? Like, is that because it's part of like a hood that comes up and over? Or? These they're 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 the vents know. of her. Uh, they're her vents to her workcaster chamber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. So yeah, they're they're fancy smokestacks, right? Yeah. So they both face out like this, and just like I, I just imagine bellowing just smoke. Belch, <laughs> yeah. green. Yeah, and that smoke is is not good for you. It, it does cause cancer. Like <laughs> like blight cancer. <laughs> yeah, blight cancer. It's extra extra cancer, and then unless your cancer is superpower, cancer that kills you, and then you come back from the dead. And ain't nobody want that. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's real bad. Yeah, because it's not like the come back from the dead, do what you want kind of. <laughs> no. It's the wander come back from the your... dead for eternal servitude. <laughs> yeah, wander into of... your kitchen. Yeah, everything. become a Roomba thrall. <laughs> Roomba thrall. You have to specially design a Roomba thrall, though. Oh, God, that just sounds so, so That's gross. some Necrotex like pet project that he'd been working on for decades. You know? Well, because we talked about basically mop thralls sure. on, a, on Primecast a while ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, <laughs> People I that had to like swab the deck constantly. Thralls, on, on I do think there has, it's been a constant struggle in Cricks of trying to make thralls that are useful for labor that don't just cause a mess. Right. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge. It's like that robot arm from Iron Man. <laughs> the one that yeah. is always goofing around. Mm-hmm. Bane's oh, his his little builder helper guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bane's aren't good for for doing errands and stuff. Either. No, they're just good for killing <laughs> for stuff. Yeah, they, you, that's <laughs> just point and click death. You're yeah. just like go over there, and they're like. That's, I think it's one reason why they still have living people in Cricks is because so far the undead are not very good at. Doing they could be like, like we we could stuff. really use a spring cleaning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can we bring some of the shard yeah, pirates in here to like just you know. Tidy up a little. <laughs> yeah, that's why you got. That's why you still have living people on the islands that, that can do do some of the Mort work. Mort Nebra's got necrotech stuff like everywhere. <laughs> yeah, she never puts her stuff away. <laughs> sure. She built that big scuttling body thing, and yeah. now, well, she claims that she can't use a broom. It's, it's a it's a messy place. I imagine every necrotech workshop being just a total nightmare. Okay. Oh, it just sharp like things. And a literal everywhere. nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> walk in there and just nope right on back. Out. Yeah, although maybe there's like one. There's like one neat freak necrotech you know who's just got it all it's got like all the little bins it's got everything uh you know in its right place <laughs> so it very i went like, gordon uh, ramsay to go to one of the sure. necrotech workshops oh yeah yeah Kid. oh no <laughs> do, do a little kitchen nightmares in uh, blackwater <laughs> what is this what is this this is not fresh <laughs> uh yeah the the f the the food and dining conditions in Craig's. i mean blight fresh <laughs> you do not Whoa. you do not want to go out for fine dining in in uh blackwater you just order something they shove a funnel in your throat <laughs> fill it with parts you're just like well <laughs> that's how you get mechanothrals that's how you get mechanothrals <laughs> 
So Legionnaire says at least uh, Malathrax has the carrier pigeon skull thrall that's thing true. figured out. Yeah, that's true. Those are, those are actually really cool. He's got his little... I want one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Little, well, I, I, I want us spiders. to make one of those. Well, yeah. When, when we were first talking about it, I mean, I don't know if it'll ever happen, but but you know, when we were working on Malathrax, the, the, we were trying to think toward, you know, if we ever make this as a thing, what would be cool? The little flying... <laughs> yeah, his little head. His little little. I remember me and Valerie when we saw that uh, the sculpts coming out for the for the carrion thralls. Yeah, like, like a year or so ago, we were beside ourselves, like just giddy, gleeful, <laughs> like those are amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always imagined um, the uh, the little Malathrax spider skull things as being really creepy. Like um, you know, the, you know, in the thing when when the the head crawled <gasps> off. <laughs> that was kind of that's what I was. I was imagining having a little bit of that vibe. And then Alec kind of kind of went off on a little bit of a tangent, but we brought up Signar earlier. He says, hey, Doug, why did Signar get away from airship research? Was that because Leto was angry because of that's how Venter escaped? <laughs> I I don't know if it was research so much as like, I, you know, we've never really given any background on on what that hot air balloon was doing. Like, you know, it would, I just imagine there being some, you know, Signar's full of mad scientists and engineers. And so there was somebody in the palace who... Nemo's not mad. He's just angry. <laughs> but, you know, so you have your Nemo arms. You'd have, like, a part of the palace that's all electrified and Nemo's <laughs> guys workshop mm -hmm. in there. And then, like, you know, several doors down was the, the hot air balloon guy. <laughs> who had his, he was working on hot air balloons. He doesn't even then, get a name. Yeah, he was he was working on in the shop, and then uh, Vinter comes barging in, you know, swords him, and then takes yeah. his. Hot Is this air ready? Balloon. No, sir. <laughs> Too <laughs> bad. And then Oof. he hops in the balloon and then flies <laughs> off, and that's the end of that. You know, Yoink. arm of research because because Vinter put a sword sorted. in. Him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I don't know. It's it's possible that's something they could return to, but I do think. That, hey, that can I borrow your air balloon? Lito, no, Lito, Lito, Lito got really distracted by all the lightning stuff, and you know they have yet to uh, return to the the hot air balloon stuff. Well, I imagine with all that static electricity and regular electricity arcing <laughs> around, that hot air balloons, depending, could be pretty dangerous. Well, sure, but I do like the notion of we we joked about um you know storm smiths having like weird weather balloon things you know it'd be a good way sure. to channel some lightning down you know send up uh send up some weird little balloons out there i like the idea of uh this poor scientist working on that that balloon <laughs> yeah. like he's he he thinks because they present like he's like he's like he's the only one that understands the yeah. technology <laughs> yeah. but he he doesn't like war right and so like venture's like all right we're gonna fund you we're going to end the war with this technology. And the yeah. guy's like all excited. Like, yeah, we're going like, to end could, the war? I could put a, I'm end bringing to war. peace? Yeah. Well, and they, that, that's, that's, and that was like, true. And like, psych! With, that was true with the, <laughs> the the invention of the airplane is, you know, the they, they really thought this might end war uh, once you had once you had airplanes. Didn't quite work out that way. Nope. But. No, it kind of went the other way. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I like the idea of, of this poor, um, optimistic, hot air tech who... Uh, was being funded by Vinter, who basically just served as an escape mechanism for him when he's when he's uh, trying it to was get away. His, it was it was his exit strategy. Yeah, it was his. his <laughs> I'm on an airship. I'm out. <laughs> like, I need a way to get out. This guy like, has a cool thing, but he only do it if I tell him it's for peace. Yeah. It's All like, right, sucker. It's need, for peace out. I need you to keep a month's worth of food in that hot air balloon at all times. But sir, I don't understand what that's for. Just just well, just keep you know. it just in there. Just change it out. It's for peace. <laughs> it's for okay. Peace. He's like all yeah, big eyed. Inventors <laughs> is like sap. Yeah, just a, you're just a sucker. <laughs> and then Nathan Howard uh, was asking, uh, so neophyte necrotex, do they yeah. have to like start with like beetles and stuff, like make a little scuttle cleaner? <laughs> I don't think there's a very systematic school of necrotechism i think uh we've kind of discussed necro technology necro technology is a words thing. are stupid i understand thing. but <laughs> but no i'm talking about the the field of of necrotism mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. the uh you, I, you can't I take think, a trade class <laughs> i i do think that it, you know you want to go to scale um the problem with scale is that's where toric lives so it's super horrendously blighted and so if you if you go there when you're alive you're not going to be alive for long right and blight. yeah and and so uh you know hopefully you can get um an internship with uh more tenebra mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh and i think she'd put you on the right path but but we've kind of shown that a lot of them are just sort of doing their own thing like they're kind of um 
uh, the, the notion being any one of them might come up with something useful at some point. And so they just kind of, they, they have like certain quotas that they have to hit from the witch lords where they're like, okay, you need to make 15 uh, of these uh, bone jacks. We need, you know, like 10 seethers. <laughs> and, and as long as they're hitting their quotas, they can have as many side projects as, sure, they, as sure. they want. So long as they're proving their usefulness <laughs> yeah, to as long and Torque and but I think we even talked about that in one of the uh, maybe in the command book um, essay with the notion of like I've always kind of wanted to write up that scene of uh, you know a lich lord coming to check on his you know the list of things that he's asked for with some of these necro. So when, when management decides it's <laughs> yeah. time to do inventory, yeah, they're like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, like, and they, then they go into the necro workshop and he's got his like vacuum cleaner thralls and his other you know nonsense that he's been working on and something really big under a sheet <laughs> don't look at that yeah it's like well no i'm, wor I'm working on the leviathan i mean uh... uh, sir your leviathan will be ready by i, I promise <laughs> by the it, deadline i'm almost done what is this <laughs> sir, sir it's special it's not ready don't touch it <laughs> gentlemen behold <laughs> The Roomba thrall. <laughs> the, the Roomba, Roomba thrall. thrall. The fleet will never be the same. Terminus is just like, <laughs> I ask for a Reaper. Yeah. You give me Roomba thrall. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Amino J says, forensic necromancy is the greatest thing ever. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, that, I, I, that's something that it's both amazing, but also... You could imagine just I always think of things as a GM, you know, as a role player, like mm -hmm. it's the kind of thing that would be super annoying in a game because like you want you want people to have secrets. You want them to be able to die with their secrets. But then some Crixian you know, yeah. <laughs> dude comes up, grabs the skull, starts gets, talking gets to the it. Gets the blighted smell of salt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, do a little, little CSI, uh, you know, reanimating him. But it was fun, uh, you know, to explore that a little bit. Um uh, you know, once once we uh, we had Scavarus, uh, just luck. God points out, uh, Night of the Necrotech. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Good book. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But yeah, the um, uh, the notion of forensic necromancy, I think, is very interesting. And and one of the things that I liked getting into um, was the notion that that certain groups like the Grey Lords having, um, you know, mechanisms to try to counter that. Uh, the notion sure. of inscribing super painful stay dead rooms, <laughs> yeah, stay dead, <laughs> you know, uh, metal inlays Available in the skulls the of, their damn, of their gray stay lords. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, just the or or it's it's more it's more like a, a vault for your brain. It's right. like you know how to keep your thoughts in your brain so that uh, the 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 Crixians can't get them. The the arms race in that case is real. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's pretty yeah. brutal. Yeah, I was just imagining, like, at what at what tier as a Grey Lord are you told that they're going to have to, like, pour molten metal into oh. your skull to, pr to prevent your secrets from being learned? I imagine it's after you've already learned the secrets <laughs> yeah, that exactly. require the yeah. process. We have, a, we have a little, mm -hmm. we need you to step into this room. We have a little procedure. <laughs> it's just, it's just a formality. It's like a haircut. Yeah, it's just like a haircut. <laughs> You're going to, it'll be fine. They're like. Because if he told you ahead, like, no, all yeah, right, you don't want to do. <laughs> in two more levels, we're pouring molten. Wait, what? I don't want to learn anymore. They're, they're not going to. No. It's it's. Yeah. You feel like you go, you, like you get like this special pin, yeah. Right, and they have like a little ceremony, and they make you yeah. feel really you're good. Like, and you're they're a like, Holdun Lord now. Oh, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> there's one little thing we need to take care of before we, before we go on. So Be before you before we teach you the next circle, stuff. yeah. <laughs> you know. Lots of stuff, <laughs> and we got to protect that stuff. Yeah, exactly. Now that's very important, don't you think? <laughs> and they give you that stare, like, yeah. "Don't you think that's important?" I, I guess it is. I guess that's important. I don't want to be executed for treason, which is why we're going to pour this into your brain pan. <laughs> Say <the> what? <laughs> it's then too late. You know the secrets. Yep. So it's either no take backs. <laughs> yeah, you you wanted to come here. Oh, I want to be the greatest forge here ever. <laughs> yeah. And suddenly you're backing out on it? No yeah. way, bucko. It's an inpatient uh, procedure. Just a couple weeks of headaches. You'll be fine. <laughs> oh, God. Excedrin's not going to solve that one. <laughs> this is death or... Yeah, it's it's the molten, the molten metal or death. 
and then we keep your head in a box. <laughs> right. Which, you know, if you if you die from the procedure, you haven't learned the secrets yet, so right. it's all good. Right. What do you what are you mixing over there, Dallas? Uh brown ink, green ink, and a little bit of Thamar black. This is gonna be the deep shade of my um silvers. Oh, that's black. By the way, if you want a super black, uh mix uh Turquoise ink, brown ink, and Adathe Mar black, and it is real black. Oh, cool. Art tip. I like it. And this is just going to be super dark to shade my silvers. I'm just going to paint a little between these chain links a little. I think I got the wrong brush in them. And then Doug, so like the the Necrotech stuff to be taken seriously in Crix, uh, Alec is asking, is that a BS level program or do you need like a PhD <laughs> for I, for people to actually like take you? Yeah, seriously? I think you need a PhD. I mean, um, you know, it I guess it depends on what you're shooting for. Like, if you want to just make mechanothralls, which is a perfectly uh, you know reasonable that's just trade job, school. That's that's not a problem. Like, yeah, they that's need, just a certificate. They need people to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to impress the the lich lords, like, or like you want to work in lich lord tenebrous's like experimental laboratory, you know, you, you need to have done your doctorate, your advanced yeah. studies. Yeah, I've, uh, that's another place that I'd love to get into. Um, we had a we had a short story. Turns out that's how Morton ever got hers. Is like her <laughs> yeah. modifications to herself. Well, she were she, her were, was her dissertation. She was pretty special, having you know gotten it. She had, definitely had the the. Well, advanced she advanced preliminary course with this with the convergence. Yeah, she started out in the convergence. Oh, yeah, so yeah. she had starting a, in the convergence is a really good leg up on your your sure. general technical uh, acumen. Um, but uh, but yeah, the, one of the things I, I've always wanted to get into is you know we have a couple of these lich lords that are basically in charge of like what would be the equivalent of um, ab, you know. Uh, experimental physics or you know of necromancy like these these guys are the, like on the bleeding edge of bleeding crazy. edge ah. <laughs> of, of, of the guy crazy, works with words <laughs> crazy necromancy um so you know like i've always wondered like what what kind of projects are going on in tenebris's uh lab back there you know in scale and of course, once you have your doctorate, right, and you know, get to Morton Eber's level, you're not, it's not necromancy anymore, it's necrofancy. <laughs> necrofancy. It is pretty fancy. It's more of an art than a science at that point. Now, have we gotten into much of like the kind of, like what kind of tech she brought to, or is that really still unexplored? Well, it, it, it I think she's probably kept it more to herself but i mean one of the notions well, i mean yeah they, they would right they keep <laughs> but, a lot of secrets but i think one mm -hmm. of the notions would be that like um Mort mortenebra was probably really instrumental in making them be able to actually mass produce hell jacks and bone jacks like mm -hmm. she was kind of the behind setting up all those necrofactoriums where you know we we've, we've kind of avoided having the sort of assembly line um technology in some areas of the setting but we sure. know that Crix has it like we've shown it in pictures of like mm -hmm. they can um crank out those those hell jacks and again yeah. since the necrotechs are crazy they do like to customize them you know they like to do some finishing touches uh make each of them a little bit unique but put their, put their thumbprint in there so to speak <laughs> sure. yeah you gotta like, put, put your stamp this on one it was mine. <laughs> try some different bones here and there you know do some some tweaks but but yeah i've always imagined that um, the notion of being able to actually create a a full military force of of jacks in Cricks that Mortenebro was probably a big part of that. Interesting. Okay. Working with the now deceased um, Morb Lich Lord Morbus that Asphyxius may or may not have had a hand in eliminating. <laughs> so when a, when a when a Lich Lord gets kaput like that, yeah. Are they are they gone forever, or is there some mystery still surrounding well, it? Like they could be brought back again. They it depends on if they kept their phylacrity somewhere safe, which Terminus did when Stryker. Um, yeah, and he came back and he's like, "Haha, I'm better <laughs> yeah, now." Yeah, yeah. yeah, like Terminus is okay. <laughs> I upgraded. But one of the one of the things that you know we've kind of joked about before as sort of a thing, but it, I think it makes sense. Like when Morbus went to the mainland, 
like he was in transition, you know, mm -hmm. he had his travel case with him. Like, right. you know, he hadn't, he hadn't deposited his soul somewhere safe yet. He, had, he hadn't figured out where he wanted right. to bury Because you don't want to, like, if you put it somewhere, if you're not careful with it, then Asphyxius gets it anyway. Or right? some kid could find sure. it, starts Somebody playing with it in the backyard. Like, yeah. yeah. So you got to you know, put it plays somewhere. Plays catch with yeah. it, accidentally breaks it. Is, I <laughs> yeah. love the idea of, like... I love the idea of like everybody's battling, right? There's like a big battle between like Crix and Signar and you know, maybe maybe some Kadorans have wandered in and it's like a big giant brawl and you just see a Lich Lord fall <laughs> right. and all the other Lich Lords just kind of stop and like, yeah. oh! <laughs> yeah, where, where's that? And it's all because Sergeant McNamara, the best of the boys, <laughs> dug up the flag. Right. And, 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 like, and, and what you see on the edge of the field, like some Necrotech just like wander off because like, he knows where it is. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get it. <laughs> They all just have that hungry look and like, does yeah. this battle really matter right <laughs> yeah, now? Because that guy had secrets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So uh, you're getting the, the shades in there, in Dallas, and mm -hmm. we're getting close to, to time mm -hmm. here. That's right. uh, what are we going to be working on with her next week? Uh, next week, I think we're going to have a boat. We're going to have a boat? Yeah, I think so. Do you want to see a boat? Uh, well, let's find out. So if folks want to see a boat, say... Show me a boat. But you also have the, the fabric on there to do. Yeah, we well. can either continue with her. Um, I think there's still a lot to learn from painting her. Well, I'm I'm interested in so basically the, the last parts of the model, so to speak, because I'm interested in the fabric, I'm interested in the hair and the horns. Yeah. We can show the boat and then we can paint the fabric, yeah, hair, and cool. horns. How's that? I think that sounds fantabulous. Mm -hmm. I, I think either is good. So we'll see what people end up saying when we go back through the comments later. I think people like I think people just care about uh hanging out and hearing cool stories <laughs> and <laughs> watching stuff. A little bit of pain. Nobody <laughs> doesn't like that. You know what we do at Private Joe Press? We make cool models with cool characters and cool stories. That's right. It's all about character. <laughs> Red Death is like boat show. <laughs> boat show. Boat show. Yeah. It's like a, it's like the gun show, but it's a boat show. Yeah. The broken boat that still works. I love it. Be I, oh, I dude, love it. I, it. Like I cannot wait to get mine. Yeah. I I know yeah. Dallas like smuggled one out for Matt, and Matt was posting about it on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, yes. Yeah, I did you see that he had the part. Son of a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't have he, mine. Yeah, yet. he tends to he tends to get the things. I, I, I smuggled one out from Wilson. Yeah, <laughs> of course Will, I did. Wilson gets the. Goods. It, that's not really smuggling though. He's, he's the owners of the company. That's like that's yeah. just like here. <laughs> that's not even smuggling. But I mean, if you really wanted to do it right, you should have assembled it for him. All right. <laughs> so oh, that would have got me all no. the brownie points. <laughs> well, not only I don't, that ruins the fun. I don't know if <laughs> that ruins the fun, Doug. Maybe, maybe for you. Agree with me. I know I'm going <laughs> to stick myself to that thing a million times. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so as we as we wrap up here, may the. Satixis, all the all the characters, everyone represented in the art, like everything in the books and stuff, female. Are yes. there male Satixis, no. or is it just only those that are female are born that way? The idea is that um, that we haven't gotten into it in a lot of detail because it's gross. But like the the idea is that like if if a male Satixis is born, it's some kind of weird malformed horrible thing, thing that is killed at birth basically okay um because they are they are not a functional so thing. in so in theory satixes breed true yes right if well, they if they if they find a, a gentleman or captive that right. they it's like always a always a Cetixis. and if it's a and if yeah and if it's a male it's killed at birth oh, god right and and we get into we get into that a little bit in the in the no quarter article as well like the one of the notions is that you know um uh in the fleet you know, if, if a Satixis wants to have a kid, they they can find anybody they want that has to oblige. Sure. So because pirates, right? <laughs> and so without, without getting into all, of that, <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. want to get into any of the details. But but the the Satixis uh, have um, you know uh, ample opportunities to to have as many children as they wish. Like, are they into children as a race? I don't. 
thinks I don't think they're good parents. Yeah, uh, they don't although by Crixian standards, they're not bad. Like I do think there is a bond between the mother and daughter that is not necessarily always the case in Crix. One of the things we've talked about in Crix is how many orphans there are in Crixian <laughs> cities. Like it, at some point, like at a relatively early age, they just kick you out of the house and you have to fend for yourself and make do. Like Whereas, I don't feel like <laughs> dealing with this mouth to feed. Yes. You're, you're yes. old enough that you're you like, can figure it out. Or you're you'll eight, be dead. You're eight now. Yeah. You can go into the city and, and make a living for yourself. Whereas the Satixis, I think, do actually take pretty good care of their children, even if they're well, yeah, probably, because those are apprentices, but they're right? Mean. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. They're, it's not a. It's not a. It's not a happy. Situation, no, it's not a good. But, li but it is. If better. you're a blood priestess and you're like. Yeah. I need another hands to get this working, yes. you know, set of hands to get this working going right. I'm willing to wait the 12 years while I yes. train this spawn and, of mine to, to be able to pull this And they off. do have dynasties like we we suggested. They don't necessarily, it wasn't necessarily guaranteed, but Scar's um, mother had been in charge of the Satixis before her. She had to earn the right sure. to take it over. But but the notion is family bloodline does matter within the, the They expect great things from you. <laughs> yes. And if you don't pull it off, well, you're dead anyway. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. That, see, that makes sense to me. It's like, like they're not going to give you any... It, it's expected. Yes. But there's no favor. There's no, right. there's no, they're not going to no give you a leg up. You, you don't get it just because Scar's your <laughs> yeah. mom. You're oh, not going to get to take over the black. That's your lead. mom? I'm sorry. It's like, okay. Like, we expect yeah, you to take it over. More of you. But if you fail, nobody's going to yeah. well, you. And I have to admit, like, you know, when, when I, when I saw Wonder Woman, I was imagining this, the twisted black mirror satix version oh. of that island like mm. the, the yeah. sat, uh, being a satixis it'd be like a much darker version <laughs> of growing up you know on that island All that's right, an so. interesting uh perspective on that yeah yeah that's cool so, final thoughts final before, thoughts before we have everyone join us again next week uh if you like scar and you think ghost boats are dope go to I do. black anchor and pick so, her up. Store.privateerpress.com. Yeah, Just click on that banner right on the front See, page. Pre-order before March 7th, and you get the free dope, dope, dope Black Anchor Heavy Industries bandana. You get a kerchief and for pirating. And be sure to get No Quarter Prime number four. For yes. more Satixis. For even more. Be and I've on... seen some of the art that's going to that. I showed like one little image that's going to be going to... Oh my God, it's good. Yeah, that art good is amazing. Yep. There's some uh, cool hobby stuff coming for mm -hmm, that too. Mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm. Um, be on the lookout for the list of Sea Cats picks. Sure. Yep. We'll, we'll point you to some Skull Island stuff. And mm -hmm. then I've got an insider from Mr. Nate Fema that has some more details on the concepting of, of Scar 3 that'll be going up a little later today. Oh, Great. Sounds good. Lots so. of Satixes. I like, I like dope pirate stuff. <laughs> yeah, I like me dope too. pirate stuff as well. Agreed. All right, folks. With that, we are out for the day. Make sure to join us Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 10 a.m. on twitch.tv slash privateer press or, of course, on Facebook, official privateer press for all kinds of fun shows, including Weekly Rumble on Tuesdays, Dev Hangouts on Wednesdays, and The Best Show. Get your paint on. Get your paint on on Get Thursday. Three days a week. <laughs> all righty, folks. Take care. Arr! Pirate life for me, <laughs> drinking rum, Texas, slaying dudes. That's all I got.